This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. War Eagle Auburn fans, welcome to No Huddle, your source for Auburn football news and discussion, part of the E2C Network. I'm AJ Richardson, and I'm also here with, I, I hope my therapist, is my therapist there? Can I, <laughs> are you there, Jared? Oh, I'll bill you. That's a, I, I will <laughs> listen to your troubles, and then I will bill you, if that right, is what well, you need you, me to do. I, if I can be your tech therapist and your you, tech specialist, you, you, I can figure out all your stuff, like, let, let's just can we do a trade even even for even i help you with your yeah. tech stuff and you help me with my therapy that'll work the problem is right, i have fine. the same i have the same therapy issues you have uh if it has to deal with <laughs> auburn football but i will do my best i'll listen and i will end every sentence with and how does that make you feel aj all right perfect and uh I, i'm already lying down so here we go i'm ready to go <laughs> just kidding <laughs> just kidding um, but we did, I feel like we did need a, a, a little bit of a, a laughter, or at least I did, because my goodness, Saturday was rough and uh, not what anybody expected. I mean, um, Cal felt like all their fans, all their experts calling Auburn to win. Uh, I think what what was got me a little bit scared too was, you know, college game day, whenever everybody unanimously picks a team to win, it's just like the, that's the that's the nail in the coffin and especially like I, i'm i have this new theory you know how lee corso used to pick us or yeah. he and then we'd lose right yeah saban's that guy now yeah so saban picked us and said Auburn's gonna dominate and you're like mm. all right so whatever saban says we do the opposite of is what happened what happens is what i'm thinking well he needs to start <laughs> saying we're gonna play like crap that's Maybe. right yeah that's, that's what- gonna that is uh, locker room material. Yeah, we that's what it. he need. Yeah, say that we'll do the opposite. Yeah. Boom, problem solved. Where can the people find you, AJ? That's right. That's right. We're done we, here. No, we're done. Um, but it just got me thinking. Like, what was the disconnect? Like, my mom even we were at the game and she just kept asking, "What was the disconnect?" And like, that's the question. Like, been probing in my mind. Like, what's the disconnect between what? on offense that we saw against Alabama A&M, which obviously is a little different than Cal, but like, what was the difference there? And, and so I, I started to think through this. I, I don't think it's like necessarily too big of a disconnect, but I want to talk it through with you and, and start to maybe like flesh this out. Like what's going on? Cause everybody's blaming Peyton Thorne. I mean, while Peyton Thorne had four interceptions and I think a lot of those were his fault he missed a lot of wide receivers that were wide open, made some dumb decisions. That's on him. But we all know football is not just a one-person team. Uh, now, the quarterback is the signal caller. He's the the head of the offense. So, for for good reason, Peyton Thorne's getting a lot of the heat. But to me, there's also something else. And, and this is where, Jared, I want to talk through this. Like, one of my thought processes, <clears throat> even against Alabama and m we were struggling to you know protect Peyton Thorne or our quarterbacks. And that's Alabama A and M. I mean, Cal they they knew that, and guess what? They went after Peyton Thorn. Um, they just continually like blitzed him, brought different you know different blitz packages or whatever it was, and it just felt like he was always under duress. So part of me is thinking like this is like a problem of old for Auburn, right? Like I don't know, like this isn't this didn't feel like. It, this is just a one-time thing because we've seen this before as Auburn fans and it hurts us um, of like, we didn't get, we, we don't have a, a, an incredible offensive line that can, you know, pass block for uh, forever. I mean, that's not even conceivable in, at any level, but like what else is going on? Like Jerry, what, what's, what else are you, did you kind of see? I mean, obviously Peyton Thorne, but like what else did you see? Um, we just never got in a rhythm. It was, yeah, and it looked like we never adjusted. Um, at least so on offense, bring, on offense, now, yeah, def- yeah, defense, yeah, did. defense did agree. Yeah, I mean, it felt like a lot of go route stuff, and I don't know enough about, but everything was you know slower developing is what it appeared, and we weren't blocking well, and so I don't I don't know where the short passes are, where the screens are, the slants are, yeah. Um, I don't, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. Like it, to me, the game plan. I will say this before. So Aaron Murray did a breakdown 
of you know every drive and I, I watched like five of them before I watched that I thought the game plan was not good and I still think it needed to be tweaked but there were open guys um mm-hmm. the I will there were open guys I mean and he he just either didn't see them overthrew them um, I will say the inter- the first interception, Aaron Murray, and I, I think I agree. He he did blame Coleman on that. He's like Coleman. He said, oh yeah. He said Thorne read it right, put it in the right place. Uh, Coleman's got to come out of that uh, cut quicker. Like that's on him. He's got to mm. get to that ball. Yeah. Um, so he put that on him. But every other one of them, uh, every other miss pass or whatnot was was uh, was on Thorne. Mm. Um, on the fourth and two, just for an example. We basically ran Coleman deep, and then we had um, Lambert Smith uh, kind of on a uh, inside post route. To, uh, yeah, to it was just a little slant. Field. Yeah, yeah, kind of a deeper slant. And then we had who's the transfer from Georgia State? Uh, Robert Lewis. I think Is it was right? Robert Lewis was on a uh, slant route behind him. Uh, Lewis was wide open. Like, yeah, Lewis may have taken it to the house. Yeah. I saw a lot of people say it was Lambert Smith. Lambert Smith was open, but semi-covered. Lewis was Mm -hmm. not covered. Yeah. And so it's like stuff like that. Like it's fourth and two. You want your veteran quarterback to see that. Um, Yeah. Well, and 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 particularly on that play, I saw Peyton looking over to the sideline multiple times. Like he was trying to figure out, and maybe the coaches were trying to signal to him, hey, this is your matchup. Go for this one. And I don't know if that's true. Or if it was literally he just said, I'm going Cam Coleman 100% of the time. I've done it in practice. It works. But it's fourth and two, middle of the <clears throat> you know field, 50-yard line pretty much, and you just got to get a first down. And at that point, you you hit the open guy. like you, and, and that's the part that, that was a little frustrating. I mean, that, that that's just one example, right, of Peyton Thorne making the wrong decision. But there's plenty of other times that – he didn't either see or he didn't go through his progressions. I that that to me is a little baffling considering how how much how many games Peyton Thorne has been in in his college career that he's sometimes still just focusing in on one guy and one guy only. When well, and on the flip side of that, the first drive, even Mur- even Aaron Murray, he, he mentioned the word dime three times, and he did. I mean, he made some great passes on that first yeah. drive. The thing with Peyton Thorne is. When he's when everything's going well, he's not bad. Yeah. But as soon as something goes off the rails, he never recovers. Mm-hmm. And so that's why he's averaging about 136 yards passing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Against power five teams. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't always go right. You're gonna make a mistake. Mm-hmm. And he just he's not able to recover. Yeah. And part of me, so another thought, and it kind of goes along with that, is Peyton, because he he does want to win the game, I feel like plays a little bit outside of himself and tries to make something happen when it shouldn't be there. You know, great examples of towards the end of the game where he's just chucking up balls and they get intercepted when you had open routes and you might have been able to put a drive together and tie things up 21 all. But he tried to do a little too much. And that's, that's the part that I I don't know. I hope that's coachable, but I've seen that also a little too much from Peyton. Like it, it kind of reminds me a little bit. And I, I've started to think on this is like Bo Nix. Like when we saw Bo Nix, you know, kind of struggling, it was when he was trying to do a little too much. And that's never a good thing for a quarterback, unless you're like Patrick Mahomes and a one of a kind dude. But that's like, that's that's where I think Peyton needs to kind of reel himself in and say, I just need to play inside this offense. And and if I'm being honest, another thought, you know, play within yourself. But if the if, if there's not the short route, maybe in the long routes covered up, hey Peyton, go run for it. And he did a couple times second half, but like <clears throat> I feel like the running game like for Peyton didn't even really kick in until like the second half. And like we all know that Peyton when he gets running and he's feeling it. He he does better in the passing game too because he's just feeling the game and feeling the flow of it too. So uh, those were just some of my thought processes. Like I definitely think there's a lot on Peyton. I think there's a lot on the you know offensive line and their struggles to give him pass coverage. But I think there's also a little bit to do with some of the game planning. Um, and, and I don't, I don't know how to kind of 
portion that out, like who gets the most. But I think everybody's going to put it, put it on Peyton Thorne. Um, and to some extent he should get some of that, but I don't, I don't think he should get nearly as much as everybody's saying. Like everybody's saying Peyton Thorne is you know, the worst player ever. And I'm like, I don't think he's the worst player ever, but he's definitely got some struggles, especially when he's playing bad. So any other thoughts on uh, Peyton while we're on it? Um, <laughs> Should we see Hank? Mm- uh, yes, we should. Here, yeah. Here, so, uh, I, I, uh, Hugh will never say this. I think Hugh was overconfident. I think Hugh said, "We're gonna go in there and we're gonna sling." I think that Texas or not Texas, Alabama, Alabama A and M game. Not on. Yeah, Alabama A and M. Not only did we not learn anything, I think it hurt us because I yeah. think we went in there and said, "These guys are four and five star receivers. We can do this to some extent against anybody." Yep. And Cal, while Cal is not. Texas, they they are a Power Five ACC team, and you can't just go sling it around if you don't establish the run mm-hmm. or if you don't have the quarterback that can do that. And I think we were overconfident, and once it did not work, we had not really gained plan for it not working. Yeah, well, and, and like part of, like I'll, I'll give you one example of this uh, that happened in one of the press conferences. So Hugh Freeze was asked, like, "Hey, are you going to go ask?" Uh, you know, the pre- previous, like, I'm not blanking on his name, uh, the guy from Cal, the quarterback. Uh, Aaron Rodgers? Well, <laughs> oh. the, the guy that's on our team <laughs> now. I'm not blanking on his name. Why do we see oh, him? oh, Sean ja- uh, yeah. Jackson. Something yeah, Jackson. Jackson. Um, and, and so, like, what are you going to go ask him? And he was like, no, nah, I think we have a good idea of what Cal's going to do. Did you? Like, did you have a good idea of what Cal was going to do? Because whatever we were doing sometimes just didn't work on offense. I mean, it felt like for a good portion of the game, offense was doing absolutely nothing. Or we'd get a few yards and then nothing. And another thing, like Hughes' offense, Gus quit doing her. He built them speed, Mm -hmm. right? Like you watch Tennessee, they're always speed too. And I get the announcers like, oh, they're trying to slow it down. Like things aren't going great. I get that. It doesn't work. Like, the only thing that might work is speed. And any t- even though, like, there was a time we got, yeah, it wasn't a first down, but it was a five-yard play on a, on a, on first down, so second and five, and we go slow. And I'm like, mm. that's not what, like, when we played Alabama a and you saw after every play, that player hustled yeah. back, put the ball down <laughs> yeah. for the ref so they didn't even have to put it yeah. down, and are lined back and ready mm-hmm. to go. And that is what, it's the chaos that controls that allows his offense yeah. to go. So I, it just annoys me. I, I'll end with this, man. I think, you know, we got down 14, seven and I texted my buddies. I'm like, we're losing. Like I, I am tired of being in that feeling. And it's been since 2017, really that we can't even overcome a seven point deficit. Yeah. And I knew it. Like you saw momentum. You're like, we are not coming back from this. It was in the first quarter. Yeah. And I was just, I'm tired of being at that level of like, we're not coming back yeah. from this. It, and I, I want to have faith, right? I mean, like we want to hope that it can happen, but time and time again, regardless of it, if it was Gus, Brian Harson, like sometimes even with Hugh Freeze, I mean, look back at New Mexico State last year, like once we got down, it was like pretty down in the dirt. And you're like, why, why is that? Like that's that should not be a thing. Like you look at, other teams and when they got down this last Saturday it, across, even across the nation some of the big teams they if you're if you have any kind of like worth you're going to battle back out and and that's the part that hurts me is like we we just aren't fighting nearly as much and you see like a few guys kind of fighting for it but like for the most part it's I, I don't this team is not giving up I'm not saying that but it's been a little rough to to get that same feeling that you got you know mid game Ah, yeah, this game's over. And you're like, mm. can, can, I'm going to forget this thought. Can we, is it okay to call out refs yeah. on here? I, never, I don't think I've do done it. that. There's nothing okay. against our clause okay. that, or any or anything that we've ever signed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we've never signed anything. <laughs> of the, yeah, never signed anything. All right, so the most textbook targeting you will ever find was the one that they Oh, yeah, on Jarquez? After they yeah. went and reviewed it. Helmet to helmet. Yep. lowers his head and I'm like this is what they are going to use in the training videos when they say this is yeah. what targeting is and they yeah. reversed it 
And here's the thing that lets you know I'm not being biased. The one that they upheld, I'm like, I don't know, man. That doesn't yeah. really, I mean, I don't really want that to be targeting. Like, that I was didn't not. Either. And yeah. they upheld it. And I'm like, what are we that doing was so here, dumb. people? And to be honest with you, it was very dumb. And the other one was earlier in the game that would have absolutely helped us. The later one, you know, we did score, but it was too late. I'm like, what are we doing? And then they called a roughing the passer that was weak. Oh, yeah. I mean. Like, that was like. That, I mean, our I mean, guy. Yeah, I'm thinking he, even in the NFL where they really protect the quarterbacks, would that have even been a roughing the passer in the, no. in the NFL? I, yeah, he, I don't think so either. I think it was one of our true. I don't think it would have been. I think it was one of our true freshmen. And when he did it, I was like, oh, man, we'd be off the field. What are you doing? Don't be. Oh, no, well, he, he didn't do anything wrong. After I saw the replay, I'm like, that's he not. He didn't even the like extend his arms or anything. Um, it was just like you kind of like, all right, no, hey, I'm here. No. Like, I barely touched the quarterback, and the and, and and honestly, the quarterback didn't. He fell on the ground, but he didn't like flop, flop. And I'm like, how did the no. ref saw what? Like, is he just making stuff up in his mind? I it it was it was terrible. I would have been able to let that go if they would have not. They, I mean, what? <laughs> so they don't call targeting yeah. on the field. It gets flagged down because they're like, hey, that was probably targeting. We need to review it. And then they don't uphold it. I'm like, why did you even flag down? Like, what are you doing? I mean, was it targeting or not targeting? It was yeah. helmet to yeah. helmet. Helmet to helmet lowered the and crown. It was lowering. How How's that not? It, it was more definitive than the actual definition yeah. of targeting. And and they did not. Yeah. Anyways, okay. I'm done. I wanted. Oh, I had yeah, to get that sure. off my chest. I mean, uh, us in the stadium, we were just like, oh, that's so obvious. And I'm sure the announcers on TV were like, even that's the announcers, obvious. they were, they were, yeah, and they were like, okay, uh, all yeah, right, they're well. they're gonna get because uh, <laughs> you know they're gonna they get can't cards and them. letters, as they say, uh, from from that. Yeah. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wild, wild. That was dude. bad. Um, yeah. okay. all right, all right. I'm I, done. I feel like we we've kind of hit on most of the offensive issues. I did want to hit on one other thing, man. Rivaldo, like he did have a good catch, but he also dropped one, and like that is not a Rivaldo thing to do. So I hope he gets that together, man. We we need him. We really need him. And uh, it, I mean, he could have kept a drive going for sure, and he just dropped a pass. So, so that. That, that that specific play, uh, Aaron Murray reviewed as well, and he said um, he circled the area. He's like, you would like to see your quarterback lead yeah. him out here with the pass, but the receiver yeah. still has to catch that ball because it, it was kind of behind him. But he's like, you yeah. got to catch that ball. Oh, man. All right, so let's talk about defense because I think this is a little bit – I mean, we struggled in the first half, right? Like, the, they put up most of their yards in the first half. Uh, but then second half, which was really good to see. Uh, to see the adjustments, um, we kind of figured out what they were doing. They, you know, Cal loved that little dump off to either the tight end or running back coming out of the backfield. And that was an easy, like, you know, eight, 10, 15 yard pass for them. Um, and, and they were doing that consistently in the first half, second half, we figured it out. And, you know, by the end of the game, like, you know, Cal's quarterback, he was playing out of his mind in the first half, second half, we, did what we had to, and uh, I feel like we did much better putting pressure on him, got a few sacks, uh, pressured him a ton, and uh, I think our DBs uh, definitely stepped up second half. Um, so props to them for, for that. I mean, DJ Durkin definitely got his uh, defense back in line, um, and, I, and I expected that, and I'm glad to see that uh, expectation was met by the defense. Um I did love a couple couple really big things. Uh, <laughs> I love Eugene Asante bull rushing. He hit. He kind of like ran over. I think it was a running back trying to block him, and he still hit the quarterback. That was fantastic. Love it. Um, another couple <laughs> of big plays. Keldrick Falk uh, got a couple back to back sacks uh, towards the end of the second quarter, um, and I think that that really helped the defense catapult them into the second half. A um, couple other things. Uh, I, I, I love Jaron Thompson. Like I was watching him all day. I see why he, he's got that little C for a captain and why he is one of the leaders because he stepped up. It was him, Eugene and Keldrick Falk in my mind. There was a few others, but like for the most part, consistently like stepping up and playing. And, uh, you need that 
because um, like without those those players, I we would have it, this game could have been even worse than what it ended up being. So, man, all right. So just a couple remorses on defense. How did we not get a pick six? Canley, he should have ran that thing back. He he had it right in his hands and just didn't run it back. I mean, like I think that would have changed the game. Like if we had gotten that, I think it would have been fourteen fourteen at that point. And uh, that's just a different ball game. That's uh, Auburn taking the the momentum straight from Cal. And uh, man, anything else on defense uh, you've wanted to talk about um, from what we saw on Saturday? I just think that we, I think we also took them for granted on defense in the beginning, and mm. um, you know the uh, offense wasn't helping, and so we just kind of let them. And it was so frustrating because they were getting every third down. They get it to third yeah. and get it. And yeah. you're like, oh my goodness, it's so draining. We can't get them off the field. Um, the quarterback's almost 100. percent It was just, it was just like terrible to watch. And but they and when, did get it corrected. They did. And get when it the time of possession in the first half was like, what was that, like 11 minutes difference or something crazy like that? That just shows you how our our defense was on the field way more than it should have in the first half. And I uh, think we have enough guys for the second half to to still come out and be. Uh, somewhat fresh Uh, yeah i actually uh i meant to say this earlier about the offense time of possession um you know we didn't we didn't have to really run offense against alabama and him every every score was almost a big play yeah and um i mean so really it was almost i'm not trying to make excuses but it was almost like we didn't have a game um this was almost like our first game oh we can't just blow by these guys we gotta actually run an offense um we didn't respond well <laughs> to that, but you know, uh, you could account this to the first game figuring everything out type thing because the, the our true first game was not, uh, you know, uh, yeah. an idea of what's going to really happen. It it, it in um, some ways felt like a a scrimmage as much as I want to say that because you only learn so much about a scrimmage, and and I think even you and I to somewhat extent like we bought into the hype oh we got these awesome wide receivers i mean even hugh thought let's pass the ball to these great new wide receivers all the time and uh yeah i think that that's where it just crushes your soul when you're like oh man that that's that's not what happened well well, and i don't even mind yet you're 100 percent right but like get it to them even in shorter fat like lat like alabama almost Alabama really struggled. If nobody watched that game, they the score looks way worse. I mean, UAB was going in to tie, possibly tie it with like five minutes left, and then Alabama yeah. blows it open. But here's how they did blow it open. Ryan Williams, who was the guy that we almost had, they ran a seven-yard curl with him. Mm-hmm. They hit him, and he uses his skills and blow past everybody and scores, and it looks like a 70-yard touchdown. Yep. So you don't have to throw it 50 yards downfield. Get the ball in these uh, talented hands any way you can, even on short stuff. Let them go make the play. Let them do the run after catch. Yeah, yeah, and that's the part that I I was just thinking back on. If you if you went to play this game again against Cal, what would you do? And I think you'd have shorter passes, especially early in the game, to get Peyton going, and have Peyton running the ball, establish a little bit more of the run game in the first half. So that in the second half, you can really blow it open with pretty much whatever you want to do. Uh, but, you know, that that's uh, just how it goes in these types of games. All right. So a couple other things. Uh, it was good to see Keontae Scott back out there. Um, he had, I think, at least one bad play from what I can remember. But I feel like that's somewhat expected uh, since he's uh, adjusting to kind of playing that outside role. And he's more of an island, uh, just trying to guard a guy. A lot of times, one on one, doesn't necessarily always have the safety help over top of him. Um, I did want to talk about some of the special teams items. Towns Magoo loved to see that he was uh, kicking off um, and uh, kicking it right into the end zone. He was uh, doing pretty well with that. Uh, we did try the sixty-one yarder with Towns, and uh, while I get it, Towns has done that. Uh, maybe not the obviously the best result there um but i did see oscar chapman make a big hit he made a tackle on that guy when he started running that missed field goal back which i thought was pretty awesome i'm glad that happened (laughs) um 
And then uh, Oscar Chapman had a pretty decent day in the punting realm. Um, he had a 54 yarder, 45 yarder. Um, I mean, I feel like he did what he needed to in the, in the kind of that punt game. He averaged about 45 yards, um, per punt and, uh, no big major returns or anything. So, um, he did what he did, but what was crazy was, I don't know if you noticed this, but the cow puncher was on something. Um, he was just nailing punts right to like the one or two yard line. I was like, that's wild. Yes. <laughs> He did it twice in a game. Yes, that that is insane. Um, uh, yeah, he he was a weapon for them. Yeah. Um, one other thing with uh, special teams, uh, Keontae Scott on the punt that he fumbled. I was like, not again, not again, dude. Um, thankfully he jumped back on it. But come on, like we gotta we gotta put somebody if it's not Keontae, somebody else who's just sure handed. I don't care if you catch it. Or just let it go. But if you catch it, you better catch it. Like, don't fumble it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, obviously lots of uh lots of stuff to work on with this cow game. And uh I mean you could you could hear it in if you watch uh the post game press conference with you freeze or even asking, you know, Peyton Thorne or other leaders on the team after their interviews after this game. Uh it, it hit them hard. I mean, we were not expecting this. <laughs> you know, coming into the game, they were saying, like their their kind of motto was "make a statement." Well, you made a statement that the deep ball was not there for Auburn against Cal, and uh, I think we got to adjust some things on how we approach running an offense. So that's what you take from it. And here we go. And, and I wanted to say one other thing because, like, as much as I I am down about this game, it is still one game, and I think we have to remind ourselves of that. Um, it, it was a you know, decent game against an ACC opponent, but there's plenty of season ahead of us. We got 10 games left in the regular season. That's a lot of time to course correct and figure things out. And if I've seen anything from Hugh Freeze, he's willing to adjust. Um, and I hope this is a big adjusting moment for him and the offense. Um, there's going to be a lot of come to Jesus moments over the next uh, week or so. <laughs> because these, these players know it and the coaches know it. Uh, there's a lot that's got to change if we want to have a winning season like I think most Auburn fans uh, at this point are very much still expecting. All right, Jared, any other final thoughts before we get out of here? Nope. I think we pretty much covered it all, my friend. Cool. Well, Jared, how can the people stay in touch with you? You can find me on Facebook under my name, Jared Davis. And you can find me on X at A-J-Y-J-Y underscore. It's always great to be an Auburn Tiger and War Eagle. War Eagle. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E2C Network. On your way out, I want to remind you to stop by E2Cnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for all our content across our podcast, YouTube channel, and much more. To stay up to date with us, make sure you're following social media accounts such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. While our content here may always be Auburn sports heavy, if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. War Eagle.